Man, I owe the IRS about like $50,000. I got about $5,000 in my bank account. If I just offer them 5,000 bucks, will they just take it and call it even, wipe this away? No, the IRS will not do that. I get this all the time from clients. Unfortunately, it's the IRS, they have a formula, and they got some forms to fill out to calculate how much to settle your back taxes. Let's get into it. All right, before we get going, I just wanna let you know that I do offer the service of looking into your particular case, see if you qualify, what that offer would look like, and if you don't, kind of what other options you have. Use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment with me. All right, so how much to offer the IRS in a settlement? Well, the IRS has got some financial guidelines that say your offer is your net equity in all available assets plus your future income. Sounds simple, obviously it's not. Let's get into this. Net equity of all assets, what exactly is that? All right, so if we take a look at the screen here, net equity is the fair market value minus any loans or anything you owe on that, on that asset. So just for instance, let's say you own a house, it's worth like 500,000, you owe maybe 300,000, so your net equity is 200,000. So you would think, okay, that 200,000 now goes to the offer. No, there are some exemptions here. So let's take a look um, at all the assets, kind of what they're going to consider here. Number one is bank accounts. It's pretty straightforward. What's in the bank accounts? Uh, you will be in, uh, allowed an exemption for up to one month of what we call allowable expenses, and we'll get into that uh, in a bit. Uh, so there is an exemption for that. So you'd minus that out. Say, let's say you have that uh, 10,000 in your bank account. You have allowable expenses of three, 7,000 will go towards the offer. Um, cars, you get uh, a 3450 of exemption. So what you would do is fair market value. Let's say it's worth $10,000. Let's say you owe 3,000 on it. You have a $7,000 for the offer minus the 3450. So seven minus a three is four, like $3,600 is what you would have uh, towards your offer. Now it depends upon, you know, if we're filing this offer for just one person or it's uh, a joint return. If it's joint, you're allowed two cars, um, so you can have the exemption for the two. But if you have two cars and it's just one person on the return, you're only gonna get the one exemption. Real estate is, like I explained before, fair market value minus what you owe on it. And then you also get this quick sale value of 80%. So let's do the math here. So you see this here. Let's say it's a $500,000 property. You owe 300,000 on it, right? There's your, your net equity in there. But then we get this quick sale 80% um, exemption on here. So times 0.8. 160 is what we're gonna put towards your offer. That's how that works. Brokerage accounts are pretty straightforward, kinda is what it is, investment accounts, stocks, bonds, those types of things. Retirement accounts is uh, similar to real estate, but we also get the 10% for taxes because if you're withdrawing out of retirement account, you're gonna get hit with the penalty on that. Um, it can even be potentially a little bit more depending upon you know what state you're living in. Uh, we would calculate kind of the taxes for that. So. But for ease of explanation purpose, we'll, we'll go with the 10%, okay? So again, let's say we, we have the 50,000 in the retirement account, um, and then we, we times it by the 0.7, the two, the eight, and the, uh, the 10. Sorry, plus 10% for taxes. So you would go minus, right, minus, yeah, plus 10. So you go the, the 70% is what we get off of this, if that makes sense. So 0.7 times, let's say the 10,000 10, you have in a retirement account, 7,000 is what's gonna go towards the offer. This is a little misleading, I apologize for that. Um, okay, so nonetheless, you do retirement accounts times 0.7 is what that is. Um, and then cash value of life insurance policy, whatever's in there that goes towards here. And then other valuable items, jewelry, other collectibles, things like that would also go in there. Um, you're gonna see here, this is from the 433A, but again, I have a video on this kind of going over there. You're gonna have all the assets on here. You'll see at the top, there it is, 433A OIC. Um, and it starts with the assets like we're doing here. It's gonna go cash and investments like we just did. Um, let's see here. Insurance policies, real estate, vehicles, other valuable items, there it is. 
I just noticed that I missed this here. You get the quick sale value for the car too. So 80%, it's 80% and the $3,400 exemption. So the car essentially works like this, $10,000 um, minus let's say a $3,000 loan, $7,000 times the 0.8 quick sale minus the 3450. That's what goes to the offer, okay? That's how the cars works. Okay, so that's how the net uh, equity of all assets works in this calculation. On to the second one. All right, so the second part of the calculation for your settlement with the offer is future income. This is normally where people get hung up and mess up their, their offer, is calculating this future income. Let's dive into this. I do have a, actually a separate video that goes into this even in a little more detail. So be sure to check that out, okay? But uh, really where this comes into play is on the 433A OIC like we were just looking at here. Um, section seven, monthly income and expenses, okay? So we start with your income, which is pretty straightforward. What do you get on like a you know, monthly income, wages, social security, pension, get that in there. Um, if you have rental income, business income, child support, alimony, dish, you know, any type of income, we're gonna get that in here. Again, this is a monthly income, okay? And the second part here, the expenses, is normally where people mess this up. This is kind of like a cheat sheet that I have here. I kind of filled this little section out over here on the right. Um, again, I took it from my prior video, but what this is, we, we kind of go this through this line by line and see what you have. You'll see there's, there's, a, there's a nice hyperlink on the 433A uh, OIC form. You know, if we could just go to this, website Let's see here open this guy up there we go right we go to the IRS collection financial standards and you'll see some standards the first one being that food clothing you'll see that right here food clothing right um, and what this cheat sheet kind of stands for okay this is this is gold right here this is I'm, I'm telling you this is where everyone messes up the offer okay uh, food clothing we get the standard standard is on that that uh, website here, right? We just go into here, National Sanders Food Clothing, click on this guy here, uh, go down, and we see how many people are on your tax return, and that's what we get. We get that amount, and you just throw that into this line here. Um, what else do we have here? Less of actual or standard. Um, so food, ho housing and utilities, no food, housing, that's just housing and utilities, sorry. We would go back, housing utilities, you're gonna see kind of where you live, right? And you pick that out. It's pretty straightforward here. And then, okay, let's say I'm in this county and there's just one person on my return. That is the standard, okay? But you'll see we get the less of actual or the standard. So let's say the standard 1600 bucks, uh, but you only pay $1,000 a month for housing and utilities. You only get the $1,000. You get the lesser of the two, what you actually pay or the standard. Now, if you pay more, then you only get the standard. That's how it also works with lease or loan payments on a car if you own the car and you're making payments. Operating costs, standard. It's pretty straightforward. You just use the amount that's on there. Public transportation is a standard, but the caveat here is you don't get a car and public transportation because then why do you have a car, right? So it's it's either or. You either get a car, the lease payment, the loan or lease payment, and the operating costs, or you get the public transportation. You can't have both. There are some times that you can, depending upon where you live, um, and if that's something you gotta do, but uh, for 95% of us, we don't get both of them, okay? Uh, Out-of-pocket healthcare costs, you get this, I was gonna say, you get the standard, but it's the higher uh, of the actual or the standard. Most people just get the standard, and again, that's on, all the standards are on this website here. So if we just go back here, Again, you'll see the out-of-pocket healthcare costs. They're right there, okay? And the standards are pretty straightforward if you're under 65 or over, okay? Um, or higher. If you pay more, let's say you have like a, a chronic illness or something like that and you always have to go get things done, whatever it may be, um, you get the higher of the two. You're gonna have to actually prove that. Court-ordered payments, alimony, child support, you get the actual, actual, actual. Um, let's see, reasonables, necessary, right? Child care payments, let's say, okay? Those are pretty straightforward though. Current monthly taxes, the actual what you pay. You got back taxes and you wanna settle those back taxes. Well, the IRS is gonna make sure that you're paying your current taxes. They don't want you to continue chasing your tail. So you gotta make a payment and that's what this is here. Uh, but it can also help right towards your offer. So you, it's in your benefit to do that. Um, and other oh, secure, this is like student loans. This is 
the mo uh, most popular is a student loan, what you actually pay here. And then this last one's a little confusing. Uh, if you have like a state installment agreement for your ta like back taxes, then you only get to, like let's say you pay $100 to the state of California for some back tax installment agreement. That you, uh, you don't get a $100 deduction here on this return. You get a percentage of that $100 and the percentage is based on the debt that you have with the state versus the debt that you have with the feds. A uh, little complicated. I go into that again in my prior video. Be sure to check that out. Okay, again, upper left, you'll t you can you can see that there. All right. So what we do here is we get now that total income minus our what we call allowable living expenses. We get the remaining monthly income. But this is still we're not at the future income. How do we get the future income? We go to the actual form here. Okay, so this is what we were just looking at. You'll see that here monthly, right? We just went through that and here's all the expenses we just went through. Okay, calculating, right, future remaining income. So there's two ways to do this, okay? So we're gonna take that remaining monthly income that we just did and we get to choose either if we're going to do the pay offer in less than five months or more than five months. This is considered the lump sum offer and this is like the payment plan offer, okay? And these go on that form 656. I do have a video on how to fill that out. So once you get done with the 433, then you have to fill out the, the form 656. Be sure to check that out, okay? Um, but we get, it, we get to choose here. You'll see the multiples. Obviously, the lump sum is a better deal. So we take whatever we have that times by 12, there's our future remaining income. All right, so back from the beginning, how do we calculate how much to settle with the IRS? Net equity and assets plus your future income. Let's take a look. Box one here is your net equity assets, right? If we take a look, where is that? Personal assets, right? Personal assets. Where is it? Personal assets, business assets. There it is. All of those added together, avail uh, available equity and assets. So that's what we would put here and calculate our minimum offer, right? Net equity uh, in assets. And then we're going to add that to our future remaining income, whichever one we decided. Do we do the payment plan or do we do the lump sum? There, there are benefits to either or. There are. Uh, but generally speaking, the lump sum, this 12 multiple, five or months, uh, five months or less is the better option. So we would put that in there, add those two together. There's your offer, okay? And then that goes on again, the form 656. Be sure to check out that video on how to fill that out. That is the second part, um, second form to fill out when filing the offer, okay? All right, so this seemed pretty straightforward. Uh, but just like with anything in life, it's a little more complicated. There can be some caveats to your offer with the IRS. Number one caveat is what we call dissipated assets. So if you saw in the first part to calculate this is your net equity and assets plus your future income, right? That net equity and assets. Let's say you had $50,000 in your bank account and you're like, well, I want to settle with the IRS. Maybe I can just get rid of this $50,000. I can give it to my cousin, whoever, right? Um, and then now all of a sudden I can, uh, I can qualify for an offer and compromise with the IRS. Well, the IRS is privy to this and that's what they call dissipated assets. So if they see that a large sum of your assets have left you within the last three years, they will include this in your offer. So be aware of that. The second caveat here to the offer is, is your average income, okay? So, so let's say on the offer, you know, you put that, hey, your monthly income right now is $5,000. But if they look at your last return or last three years of return um, and they calculate an average of your income was way higher than that, they may not use what you put on there. May, they may just say, hey, no, but your average income is, is this. Um, that's why you don't qualify for the offer. Your offer is a lot more than that. The last caveat to the offer here is, I would say the most common caveat here, and people most often look over 
which again, this form 433A OIC does not take into consideration. And that is the full pay by the CSED. What does that mean? CSED is an acronym for the collection statute expiration date. If you've ever heard that the IRS has 10 years to collect on your tax debt, that is true. And the IRS knows this, okay? Now, I have a video on just this topic in and of itself because it is kind of complicated how it works. Be sure to check that out. But in short is, you know, if we take your remaining monthly income, right, your income minus your allowable living expenses like we just did, and then we multiply that by how many months are left in the CSED, that 10-year statute date, and if that can pay off the balance of the offer, no offer. If it can't pay off the balance of the offer, then that may be your new offer. Okay, so again, check out the video. It's got more details, um, but nonetheless, that is a caveat, the full pay by the CSED. So just a little quick recap here. How much do we offer to settle our back taxes? It's your net equity and assets plus your future income. We just went over how that calculates, but nonetheless, that's the, the short of it. There's obviously some caveats to this, and there are a couple more details that I definitely didn't go into, but some of my other videos do explain. Be sure to check those out. If this video was helpful for you guys, please subscribe to the channel. I do go over um, actual cases um, with all the forms and supporting documents that I have filed where they have actually been accepted and you'll see the you know what they used to owe, what the offer amount was, what we got the settlement for, all the back and forth. Be sure to check those out. Um, I will go into, I, I, I will continue to upload more videos that do show more of these case examples where I, I get these offers accepted. Um, this is something that you're looking into. Be sure to subscribe. If this video was helpful, please share it. If you want to learn anything else that I haven't kind of gone over, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much.